Hello and welcome, I'm your host Lazarus. We're going to talk about this uh, perch to this video, Debunking the Librarian Comics Theory. And that theory is basically, hey, librarians buy books. Hey, they don't have to spend their own money. Hey, the books they buy tend to be biased in the political beliefs that the librarian has. Which, hey, all leans one way. And, hey, I got a squeaky chair. No. And, hey... They like to check off check boxes that will make their political paymasters and their own political fifis feel fine. Now I'm not gonna I'm not here to judge politics or any of that kind of stuff. That's that's not my goal here. And I don't know that uh, at the end of this, at the end of anything, you can say that they're ruining the industry, but they are definitely affecting the industry. So let's go ahead and hear Perch here a little bit. Just get his voice on the record. Are librarians ruining comics? Well, some seem to think so. Let's let's figure that out. Okay, Perch, let's figure it out. So then he spends most of the rest of the time discussing politics and stuff like that, uh, political leanings, that kind of thing. And he doesn't get into numbers. He does not attempt in any way to get into numbers. And numbers are hard. Uh, I don't think any of us have access to Scholastic's uh, actual sales figures in this area or any other. Maybe that's out there in their investor relations info or their stock reports or something, but I don't have that information in front of me. I've got to be honest, I'm not sure I even know where on their website to start looking that kind of stuff up. Some companies I can find that for pretty easily. Others, less so. I don't think for the purpose of my argument, I need that because all I'm arguing is that I don't think that Perch can make the blanket statement that he makes here where he says he's debunked the theory where he says that librarians are not driving the industry. All right, so let's flip over here. How many schools are there in the United States of America? According to the National Center for Education Statistics, this was very easy to find, by the way. This is like one uh, search on DuckDuckGo. Boop, there it is. According to them, we got about 100,000 elementary and secondary schools combined. I got to mute the mic for just a second here. I'm going to take a drink. Apologies for that. Uh, I've been having like a coughing fit today. I don't know why. Probably because I'm trying to brain good and, you know, I haven't like flexed those brain muscles in this kind of way in a while. But we got 100,000 schools. We're going to do what's called a Fermi problem. Uh, the canonical Fermi problem is uh, how many piano tuners are in Chicago? And so you go, okay, well, there's like a million people in Chicago. Let's say one in 100 owns a piano. That means that we have to have 10,000 pianos in Chicago. A piano needs tuning every 10 years. So that means we got to get 1,000 pianos tuned a year. One piano tuner can service 200 pianos in a year. So then that means we need five piano tuners. Done. We're going to kind of attempt that. So we got 100,000 schools. And the thing about a Fermi problem is it's not meant to be accurate. It's meant to get you thinking about the factors that go into something. So we have 100,000 schools. I started writing an S here because I was thinking about the word schools. Each school is going to buy X books per school per year. So now the schools will cancel each other out and we're going to be left with something that's books per year. But what's this X? What is the X factor here? Wow, the sun suddenly just came out in the last minute or so, and it is super bright out there. I hope that's not uh, disturbing the picture too much. But what is this number? I don't know. It could be 1. It could be 50. I'm not sure. I don't have access to that. The only people who do? Scholastic. Scholastic knows this number. But let's be super conservative. Let's say it's 1. Just to make our math nice and easy. That means the market to libraries is 100,000 books a year. It's about, let's say, 1,000 books a month. All right, well, what's 8,000 books a month mean? Well, let's find out. Let's go see what the sales on Comicron look like. You want to? You want to go see what Com Comicron's got going on? Because I want to go see what Comicron's got going on. Uh, this will just kind of help us establish scale. Is this 100,000 books big enough to have an effect on the market? That's all I'm arguing, is that that does have an effect on the market. 
Oh, I got Comic Crown open right here. Uh, we'll go back to July of last year. I just pulled up like a random month last year and then clicked and then just like went forward a few months just to kind of look. So we got top selling book is 5,000 units. Top selling book is 5,000 units. Top selling book is 20,000 units. I know Saga is like super hot, uh, so that doesn't surprise me. Uh, these image books all seem to do very well as collected editions because people didn't get in on them when they were being printed as single issues, so they want to hop in and get the stories and the trades. That's cool. I don't, I don't have any, uh, any reason to say that's bad. That's awesome. I'm glad that those books are selling. Batman White Knight, 12K units, Wonder Woman, My Heroes Have Always Been Junkies. Is that any good? Like, I saw that on the shelf, and I almost got it. But then I was like, eh, I don't know. So we're looking at 10,000, 10, 12,000. And we're back down to like 5,000. Hmm. 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 We're doing 8,000 a month with this incredibly, incredibly conservative number over here. 8,000 books per month sold to libraries. That's equivalent to being, for most months, the top selling book. You're telling me that no publisher out there wants to be moving the top selling book worth of books to libraries every month? I don't think that's true. And this is super conservative. It's probably much more likely that they buy five books a year, or maybe six. You know, they probably have a budget of a couple hundred dollars that goes into buying trade paperbacks. So you're looking at four to ten. I think that's a reasonable number. If it's 10, that means we're selling a million books a year, which means we're moving 80,000 units a month. If you spread that out among 10 titles, you now have the 10 top-selling graphic novels every month. That's a lot of books. By any measure, that is a lot of comic books being moved into libraries. It absolutely is. I got some library books around here somewhere. Ah, now these are purchases I made uh, that I got from, like, the public library, uh, from, like, a library cell. And a lot of library books do come from uh, donations and stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this, uh, I got this from a library. This is kind of funny. Uh, you know, I, I just get stuff like that, because it's interesting. And it helps libraries buy more books, which I think is a, uh, you know, it, it's just a good thing. It's just a good thing. Libraries should have books so that people can go in and read them. I used to... When I was younger, I used to go to uh, public libraries all the time and read books. I read, like, every Star Wars novel that was out in the year, uh, like, 2000 that way, man. Like, I had no money. And uh, if you got no money, you got to do what you got to do, you know? So we go into town to run an errand. And while we were in town, we said, well, let's, 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 go to the, let's go to the public library. And we go. Which isn't the same as going to the school library. Those are different markets, as Perch points out in this video. Like, I'm not trying to diss what he's saying, but I'm saying he can't draw his conclusion. Not yet. There's not enough numbers. We don't, we don't have the truth. If we had the truth, then we could actually argue about it and talk about it. But I think that the library, the school library market, the librarians that are purchasing books, they have enough financial clout among them that if they all want to buy Miss Marvel... They can buy 8,000 copies of Miss Marvel when it comes out. No problem through Scholastic. Like, that's not an issue. Even this super lowballed number here says that they could probably do that. Which distorts the market. Miss Marvel doesn't sell that well on uh, comic book stores. But if it sells that well through Scholastic, the publishers are incentivized to keep publishing exactly that same comic book with exactly that same creative team as long as it makes some money. Now, there are other factors in here, like what's Scholastic's cut? What's the actual selling price through Scholastic to the libraries? What's the cut the publisher gets from, uh, from the sale? Which I think is probably smaller than the cut they get from Diamond because uh, huh, retail's brutal and Scholastic books are priced very differently from how Diamond does it. Like the sell to the library will not be the same price as the sell to the comic book store through Diamond. There's a ton of factors going into this, but I think just kind of the scale of the numbers shows that, hey, this is going to affect 
the comic book market. This is going to distort the sales away from just what would sell in a comic book store. Now, that's probably a good thing because, to some extent, because it gets different books published. And if all the books that are published are all exactly the same, uh, that's a very boring market. You don't want everything to be exactly the same. Even if there's things out there that you personally... I'm over here like gesturing and stuff. Even if there's stuff out there that you personally don't like, that's fine. There are people that like it. The problem here and the problem that people have with this kind of stuff is that not a lot of people actually seem to like the material that uh, school libraries purchase in this regard. I'm trying to remember, like, when I was a kid, man, the stuff that librarians would push, and um, none of it was actually any inter any bit interesting. Like, I always wanted to read, like, something cool, as opposed to, like, the diary of old Jack or something. It's like, ugh. Why would you do this to me, school? Why would you do this to me? Let's just go read Lord of the Rings. Let's go read... Oh, heck, I don't even know what else we read when I was a kid. Or... Uh, I guess some of that's teenagery, but yeah, you definitely wouldn't have like a kid read Diary of Old Jack. They'd just they'd get so bored they'd never touch a book again in their life. <laughs> but uh, there you go, Perch. Is this your first video response to something? This all started out as just this little uh, comment I left on his uh, YouTube channel down here, where I started like talking about, hey, this is an interesting Fermi problem. There's do -do 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 and, uh, you know what? I got a hilarious typo right there. Can you edit your comments? Yes, you can. I'll just edit that, fix that real quick before Perch reads it. But, uh, this started out as just like a YouTube comment. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized, you know, this deserves actually sitting down and looking at and trying to figure out, like, the scales. Like, how does that compare to Comicron? How does that da-da-da-da? And I think I've kind of done that. So you all have a great day. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good, good stuff. I sure hope to see you again next time. Until then, bye-bye.